Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to deploy a prediction model on AWS using SageMaker. Okay, so first you need to find out which region you are. I was supposed to be in region 2, but sometimes you're supposed to use region 1. Uh, depending on where you are. Okay, so uh, as you can see, here is the data frame. And then we're going to drop user ID, obviously. There's no other... Uh, columns that need to be dropped, there'd be none left. Okay, so then you create a bucket, right? Make it very unique. Bucket created successfully. Now that we dropped the user ID, let's look at the info. Okay, as you can see. Okay, so obviously, you, you obviously know enough about machine learning. Okay, and then we're going to make them as arrays, obviously, in float32. Test train split, you already know. And then once you see this, this is uploaded to the S3 buckets, okay? Okay, and then uh, the role, the execution role, this is obviously very important. And then the image URI. Okay, he here's where it, <laughs> this gets funny. Uh, because if you're ever going to deploy an XG boost or a TensorFlow model, you need to change this. But we're going to do a linear learner model on the binary classifier type, obviously. You see right here? Because if we were going to do a linear model for regression, we would be doing a different than binary classifier, obviously. Okay, so as you can see, the reason why we have uh, feature dim equals three is because there's only three columns, obviously. Okay, and then we're going to deploy it at this instance. We don't need it at any higher, obviously. So, here we go. And then the mini batch size. The reason why I chose this was because there wasn't too much. Obviously, if you got more data, you can add more of the batch size, and you can get into linear algebra and all that if you want. Okay. Now we're going to train the model. Now, okay, if you paid attention earlier, over here, it has to be in the S3 buckets to train and all that. The reason why I didn't drop more columns is because, think about it, you only got this left. I'm pretty sure that would mess with the accuracy. And then, um, okay, you know your X train shape? You see right here, 268 and 3? That's exactly where you do the feature dim. You see? 3 and 3. Okay, this is going to take a while to train. Now, i got to warn you, if you guys do an XG boost model, sometimes you get framework errors, and that will fail right here. Depending on your account, it will say, training image failed. So if you're using an XG boost model, beware, that does happen sometimes, different versions. And then obviously, uh, let me skip while this is training, because even when it deploys, obviously, this is going to take some time. Okay, so, um, as you know, when it's deployed, you need a CSV and JSON deserializer. Because the it's spitting out JSON. And then we're going to predict X test from earlier. You guys see the scores and the predicted labels? This is from before. This is not exactly a school. This is just a simple tutorial of how to show you how easy this is. Most of you guys are have been using AWS Lambda and want to learn to use SageMaker. SageMaker is a lot easier, as you can see. Look, it needs a lot less code. While this is training, um, in the next video, I'm going to deploy a, we're going to deploy a regression model. And it's obviously going to have a different amount of columns in the target values, so we're going to do again 
how you can check yourself because you won't always have the same you do an X train shape right here and then obviously the second number that's how you know whenever you're doing a linear learner whether it's for regression or binary classifier how many although when you're using XG boost the advantage you have is you can do uh, multi-classification doesn't have to be binary and you don't have to use this argument right here okay it's downloading the training image it's about training is about to be initialized pretty soon this does take up a little bit because it's a linear learner it trains differently than an XG boost you can also use KNN it's pretty much the same same parameters although I prefer linear learner as you can see let's go down at the end it'll tell you if you pay attention what its metric score was it's still training okay now we're done okay so as you can see right here 85 percent the recall score 93 the ROC which is a very tough metric is 94.9 percent if you move the decimal point over but the validation is here where it gets you only the precision it didn't do as good okay so we really didn't even need to okay now we're gonna deploy as you can see this is a very accurate model now obviously uh, as I told you while this is deploying well you're obviously going to get a, a better prediction than these because last time it um, it didn't actually train as good drop the same column funny okay um, you guys are going to need to create a lambda function if you guys want to do an API call to the model from Postman. Obviously, you guys need to uh, create a... Here, let me show you. I don't got time for that, but I'll just show you and then explain to you some of the steps. Okay. So, we're at endpoint configurations. Obviously, the endpoint configuration has started. Now there's the endpoint, which hasn't been created. It's creating, but when it creates, you'll get a, you'll use this URL, and then uh, you'll create a lambda function. Once you do the lambda function, you give yourself an access token, and then you can go to Postman, do an API call to the model. Just make sure you, you guys pretty much know this. Sorry, I'm not trying to, I mean, if you're watching this video, most likely you're a machine learning engineer or data scientist, you just haven't happened to use this. Therefore, you guys don't really need any schooling. Now, I do have to warn you. When you guys deploy, make sure you don't do it too big or too small. Otherwise, if you use a larger test set, uh, it'll be too much to handle depending on what your account is set up as. This right here is one of my free tier. It's not my developer account, so I'm just using an extra account. Should be done in a couple minutes and then we'll get to the linear learner for regression.
Do not do those tutorials they offer for free on uh, for SageMaker on uh, AWS because sometimes their code doesn't work for certain versions of SageMaker. So you'll you you you'll be copying it, playing with it, whatever, and you'll be going, "What the hell?" So it's better to learn from me. better to do it this way okay guys and then the great part about SageMaker is it uploads the best model as you can see right here no early callbacks needed it automatically does it for you. Okay, I'll shut up in a second, guys. We're, uh, it's about to be done. The endpoint's about to be created. Most of this is self-explanatory when you look at it. Just so you know, SageMaker came out in 2017. It's not as widely used as it should be, but it's getting there. If you guys use Lambda, you guys will probably realize how much better this is if your employer or whatever asks you to do it with SageMaker. And obviously, this is pretty self-explanatory. Billable seconds and training seconds. Well, billable, it means billing, obviously. But I didn't need to tell you guys that. You guys know that. Like I said, most of this is self-explanatory. You can see the training history. And these are pretty tough metrics. Good job. So you guys can get a good idea of how SageMaker works. See at the beginning? And then you guys see, like I talked about earlier, for the validation and then up here for the, for the training. Scored very well. And the endpoint should be created anytime soon. If you guys have been uh, watching, looking at the timer, how long has it really been? <laughs> I bet you when this hit the, oh, it hasn't even been 15 minutes and it already has been created. You see this right here? It means you're good to go. Okay. The predicted label and then the score. You guys obviously know that. And then I explained to you guys, if you guys want to do a API call, I'll get to that in a second. In case you guys forgot. Okay, and then we're going to score. And then we're going to put it in the data frame. As you can see, these are not too far off. Nah, they're not far off at all. And then you guys, just for fun, can save it to a data frame and then it's up here. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Check to the next.